coming back to this idea of spider mites and, and really trying to tackle this head on, this is the time of year where spider mites become a very realistic impediment to our bonsai cultivation and understanding spider mites is the beginning of being able to control and address spider mites. And so I wanted to start from the top and just basically break down spider mites for you guys, show you a tree that has spider mites and offer you some of the ideas about how you can go about maybe mitigating or preventing their infection. If you do have infection, stopping it from really advancing, identifying it, all of these components that we need to understand to be able to protect our bonsai from massive spider mite infestation. Okay, so first and foremost, let's establish the idea that a spider mite is not actually a spider, it's a mite. And we're going to show you a spider mite under a microscope so that you can understand sort of the construction of this spider mite and also how it functions in terms of damaging the tree. And that brings us to our first point, spider mite damage. Now what do spider mites actually do to a tree? Spider mites are almost microscopic, not quite. They can be seen with the naked eye if we have really good eyesight, okay? And there are ways to enhance our ability to identify them, but they are actually piercing the cellular structure of an individual plant cell and they're removing the cellular contents which there causes death of that cell, right? The thing that spider mites are feeding on is this abundance of chlorophyll because chlorophyll, that green pigmentation in the cell that captures the sun's energy and uses it to break the molecular bonds of water and carbon dioxide to create the sugar that the tree runs on, that is very full of a lot of nutrition and it's a very succulent piece of growth to be feeding on for a spider mite. They have a stylus that comes out of their mouth, pierces the cell, and drinks up all of that nutritious content that exists. Afterwards, the cell is now dead. Now, the signs and symptoms. How do we know we have spider mites? What are we looking for? What are the identifying components of spider mites? Well, the first and the biggest identifying component of a spider mite infestation is the graying of the foliage. Now, when we talk about the graying of the foliage and we're watering our trees and we're looking at a tree and we're saying, boy, that tree looks duller than it usually does, doesn't it? Something not quite right. I don't, I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it, but the color is not bright. The color is not brilliant. The color is not glowing, right? This is a first indication of spider mites. Graying of the foliar mass. Because the spider mite is sucking that cellular content out, it's reducing that appearance of the chlorophyll that gives a tree its very green color and its ability to photosynthesize. When we start to have that inclination that the color is just not quite right, we should immediately be checking for spider mite as one of the first things that we do to start identifying what is happening with this tree. Now, yellowing is another indication, and when we think of yellowing, we're not talking about yellowing like the loss of nitrogen or uh, any issue with a nutrient deficiency. We're talking about that same dullness, but instead of graying, we're seeing the needle actually go to a yellow dull color. What ends up happening is as that, as that cellular content is removed and that starts to accumulate, we'll start to achieve a stippling, meaning if you looked at that needle under a microscope, you would see see the individual cells that the spider mite has consumed the resources from, inside of that, seeing those individual cells, as those start to accumulate, we actually see that form a more consistent solid block of color that is yellowing with the loss of that green pigmentation. Reduction of vigor. We're watering this tree, we're looking at it, it doesn't quite look right, and it hasn't been using the same amount of water, it's not producing the same amount of strong growth, it just seems like something is a little bit off. All of these very sort of obscure, uh, it's not quite bright and vigorous, it's a little bit yellow, it's gray, it's not quite as healthy. Another very significant indicator that when we start to notice this loss of vigor, we should be checking for spider mites. And the, the, the last major indicator, and this is when we already have a full-blown spider mite infestation, is the presence of fine webbing. Now I say this is the last because if a spider mite infestation gets to the point where they have fully created webs and networks and it's a breeding community of spider mites, we have a major, major problem. But sometimes if we're distant from our bonsai or we've got a lot of bonsai and we're not looking at each one very carefully every single day, that population can increase but sort of under our nose without us ever seeing it and the presence of that fine webbing in between the base of those needles or, or leaf mass in between the branches and the petiole of the leaf that can be a very significant indication that we have spider mite 
Okay? Now, when we talk about environmental influences, what actually facilitates occupation and infestation of spider mites? Number one is heat. That's why we're talking about spider mites now, because we're entering that summer season where spider mites become a very, very real problem. When we have very warm temperatures, heat automatically transitions to and means dryness to a large degree. Drought and that low relative humidity are also increasing and sort of encouraging that spider mite infestation with those higher temperatures. The last component is dust. Very dusty, high accumulation of debris in the air. When that starts to get onto the foliage mass of our trees and accumulate, that's a breeding ground for spider mites. They love dryness, they love heat, they love low relative humidity, and they love dust because it creates all of the components that allow them to breed and facilitate the expansion of their populations to be feeding on that tree that they've found to be very nutritious and enjoyable to be sucking the cellular contents out of. So here we're taking a close look at a spider mite under the microscope. And you can see the two spots on the thorax of the spider mite, the yellow portion near its head, that gives it the name the two-spotted mite. Now when we take a closer look, you can see the knobs in the mouthpiece of the, or the mouth part of the spider mite. And when we zoom in even closer, you can see the stylus in between the two clear knobs. That stylus emerges from those knobs and penetrates the cell to suck out its vascular content. When we take a look at a needle that's been impacted by a spider mite on the left, you can see the cellular structure has been removed from the yellow pigmentation and that these cells are now dead. And the healthy needle on the right doesn't have that same stippling effect that would cause the graying color to occur. Here we can see the eggs attached to the surface of the needle. Now when we use water to remove spider mites, a lot of times the eggs remain. As these eggs hatch, we want to be continuing to use water over a 7 to 10 day period to be washing off all crawlers and adults so that they can't reproduce. So now that we've visually seen the sort of those nuances and indicators that we might have a spider mite problem, we need to know about how we go identify that yes, in fact, we do have spider mites because of the fact that they're sm so small and oftentimes very difficult to see. Now the paper smear test is our biggest most accurate and in my mind unless you want to pull off needles of each tree that you're worried about infection on and put them under a microscope the paper smear test is going to be your most accurate way to identify spider mites the paper smear test means taking a white sheet of paper holding it under the branches of the tree tapping the branches so that you shake off some of the spider mites onto the white sheet of paper and then smearing the paper to see the streaks of blood of the soft-bodied spider mite smashing on the paper. Now this may seem gross and most of us might be saying, I can't crush an insect in my hands. Spider mites are so small, you'll never feel it, you'll never actually see it, but you will see the streaks on the white paper and that will give you an indication. One thing to be very clear about when we do the paper smear test, when we're dealing with spider mites that are attacking our tree, we're going to see a red streak or a brown streak of blood on that paper, okay? When we see a red or brown streak, this is the color of the two-spotted spider mite, which is the most common spider mite impacting our bonsai cultivation. Now, you may smear and see other colors on your paper. Maybe you see a black, maybe you see a yellow, maybe you see a green. These could be other insects like an aphid leaving some of these colors or they could be the colors of predatory insects that are there actually feeding on the spider mite population and it's important for you guys to know what colors would be indicating spider mite presence, red and brown. Now once we've seen that we have a spider mite infestation, we've got this graying or this loss of vigor, or this yellowing, stippling, webbing, we identify it, the paper tap test, we smear, oh my gosh, there they are, what do we do? Right? We have multiple ways that we can go about this. One thing to know about spider mites is spider mites reproduce very, very rapidly and this is what makes them so difficult to treat. When we try to control spider mites, it is a consistent application of control over time that gives us the very best results. Now, if we're saying, listen, I'm not big into chemicals and I don't want chemicals to be my first sort of point of access for controlling spider mite populations, I found it on one tree, I tested several trees around it, I'm not seeing the same uh, you know, indicators of spider mite infestation, or nothing else shows infestation except for this one tree had some spider mites on it. Okay, water eradication can be one of the most low impact, least 
uh, absolutely no chemical involvement that can lead to control, but it's about consistency, dedication, and accurate approach. Because when we use the power of water, we're saying that spider mites are facilitated by heat, by dryness, and by dust. We can actually physically remove the spider mites from that plant by taking a powerful stream of water and washing them off of the foliage mass. But we have to be careful with this because we're going to have to come back and do this on a daily basis for at least seven to 10 days to be able to get rid of them, wash them off and create an inhospitable environment. And that water can have a negative impact on our tree if, number one, that water is also pouring over the root system. We've gotta be very careful when we try to eradicate spider mites with the uh, application of washing them off that we're not soaking and saturating the roots every time that we do it because then we may trade a spider mite infestation for a root related issue that could be far worse and far more difficult to rectify. Number two, when we're hosing this off constantly, we are gonna be keeping the foliage mass wet and in areas where we have disease issues present, which spider mite are just as prone to attack disease ridden trees already, we could be favoring the spread of that disease. So we need to approach this in a well thought out manner. Okay, and we'll show you the water eradication method. Now, when we come down to chemical treatment, we say either the water eradication method didn't work or the water eradication method was not going to be possible without detrimenting the balance of water and oxygen in the soil system, or I do have a heavily disease prone tree, we do need to start to look at what are some chemical treatment opportunities. Now, we cannot as a public forum uh, be recommending or promoting different companies and chemicals. But there are single application chemicals that are said to have a residual impact that could knock down spider mites, okay? And you can look for those and you can find those in a lot of your uh, home do it centers or hardware stores that sell mite specific insecticides, okay? And there may be other elements in that chemical that are dealing with other issues in the garden, but it needs to say that it treats mites, okay? And this is a big one, right? We can also look at oils and soaps as a potential single application method to knock down large portions of spider mite populations. The disadvantage or the danger to oils and soaps is that oils and soaps can also be phytotoxic or can be detrimental to the tree itself. So before you use an oil or soap, it would be best to test it on another plant of that species, maybe a nursery tree or a lesser uh, significant tree, to make sure that that oil or soap does not impact the health of that tree before you apply it to a prized specimen. We also have a multi-stage treatment. If the water eradication didn't work or is not uh, acceptable, the single application oils and soaps aren't a realistic option and you can't find a single application method at your hardware store. Multi-stage treatment is saying with spider mites, because they breed so rapidly with one application of a treatment, a lot of times we will never kill all of the population of mites on that tree. If that population that survived that initial chemical treatment reproduces, has offspring, those offspring are now slightly resistant to that chemical. If we come back and we, we treat with that chemical again, as per label recommendations, there's a chance that some of those offspring that were mildly resistant will survive that second application and produce an offspring. Two generations that are not killed off by a chemical become resistant to that chemical in their offspring, and now we've got to rotate a chemical. Most of the time, when we're dealing with spider mite infestations as a consistent aspect of the environment that we're growing bonsai in, hot, dry areas of, of the world, um, areas where we have surrounding trees that suffer from spider mites that do get into our bonsai, we need to have three chemicals that we can rotate through that are attacking the spider mites at different stages of development, as well as different modes of action in the chemical, so that we apply two applications and we can always come back to another chemical for that third application to be able to eradicate all of the life cycles. If those don't work, we have a third chemical that we can apply that the, the spider mite cannot possibly become resistant to. So we always have an effective measure to control spider mites. Three chemical multi-stage treatment is a very common approach to spider mites knowing their ability to develop resistance. And it's wise to have chemicals that attack different stages with different modes of action for how they impede that spider mites development to have success in eradicating an infestation.
Let's go out into the garden. Let's take a look at the paper smear test. Let's, let's take a look at how we apply the water eradication method. And you guys can do your own research on the chemical treatments that are going to provide you with the best possible control in your area, depending on what you're dealing with in terms of spider mites. Okay, we're out in the garden and we're taking a look at two ponderosa pines side by side just to be able to compare how does that graying appear visually and, and what does it look like in comparison to a very healthy tree. Now the ponderosa on the left is a ponderosa that has no spider mite impediment whatsoever. We've tap tested it, we've uh, done the paper smear test, and we don't find any indication of spider mite. And you'll notice how beautiful and vibrant the color of the ponderosa on the left is. Now if we take a look at, a, at the ponderosa on the right, what you're going to notice is a significantly duller color. It lacks that luster, it lacks that green, and particularly in this lower branch you notice how gray and how mute of that green color the ponderosa Ponderosa branch is. Now when we tap test this tree, the amount of spider mites that fell off of it and were smeared across the paper was significant, which tells us that this tree has been experiencing spider mites for a fairly prolonged period of time. Unfortunately, this was not something that I identified amongst all of the trees that are at Mirai, but when we see this indication, we go and we test a lot of the other pieces of material at Mirai to make sure that this infestation is not spreading to other trees throughout the garden. So here we have another ponderosa that's being grafted over with black pine and both the black pine and the ponderosa are showing the same graying that we noticed in those other two, the other tree that we were comparing. If I want to be sort of deciphering of am I dealing with a spider mite infestation, I'm going to use the white paper tap test as my sort of distinguishing indicator to be able to accurately identify. So we want a really nice clean sheet of white paper so that when we smear it we can see those blood streaks and we can see the smears and in fact if our eyesight is good or we have glasses or we wanted to use a magnifying glass we'll actually be able to physically see the spider mite running around on this paper after we tap them off. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold this white paper underneath the foliage mass and I'm just going to very gently and notice that I'm not hammering on the foliage mass, I'm not harming the foliage mass, I just need to tease off the mites from that needle mass. And I'm going to do so across several locations on the tree because I know that spider mites, when they first begin their infestation, will start in a singular localized region and they'll branch out from there. So if I just do one branch and I don't see them, I might miss the fact that there's an infestation. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this across the entire canopy. Okay? Now I'm going to set this white paper down and I'm going to circle anywhere where I see a spider mite present just so that you guys can see what I'm seeing in terms of the mites, and there are a lot of them on this tree. Okay, So our spider mites are inside of these brown circles as I can identify them. Now this is the indicator if we can't see those individual mites. When I take my hand, watch the white paper closely, and I run my hand over them now, you're going to see that red streak in each of these white circles where I've been able to actually identify the mite. Now you can see the blood streak that's occurring in each of these locations. Okay. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to do it without the brown circles, just so you can see the white with the streaks and make it very identifiable. And if you guys want to know the truth, I've been saving this tree for this feature piece of content so that I could accurately show you guys spider mites. In doing so though, we're experiencing a population boom that is not good. Okay, So now I have all of this sort of debris on the paper. When I smear it now, if you come in here, you can see all of the little blood streaks that are occurring as a result of the spider mites having been on the tree. So now that we've accurately identified that we have spider mites and that is the cause of this graying of the foliage, now we need to look at all of our different ways that we could handle this situation. Now I notice on this tree that the foliage mass hangs off of the container quite a bit and there's a very strong opportunity for me be to be able to wash the spider mites from this foliage mass without overly soaking the soil system of this, of this tree. If we consistently wash the foliage mass off over several days, seven to 10, we're gonna be able to 
get control of this spider mite infestation just without any chemicals, just by a very basic horticultural application of water. I'm gonna show you guys how we effectively do that, and then we're gonna consistently apply this to this tree over the next week to 10 days to be able to manage this infestation. If in seven to 10 days we still are seeing spider mites via the tap test with the white paper, we'll move to chemical control methods as we explained on the whiteboard. And those chemical control methods, again, might be available at your hardware store, anything that says mite control, soaps and oils, but we wanna be careful about their application and do a test subject first of a similar species. Or we can move to sort of that three chemical control cycle that we talked about at the end of the whiteboard discussion as a way to be able to control not only the current infestation, but also the eggs and the reproduction of the spider mites so that we knock out all of the life cycles and stop the infestation from continuing to advance. Let's take a look at how we use water to possibly and hopefully get rid of this infestation on the tree. So when I come back to the water eradication method, I want to be very careful to not overly soak the soil system. And ideally, I'm not going to be applying water to the soil unless it's dry and it needs water, obviously. But I'm not going to be applying water to the soil because I don't want this eradication of spider mites to impact the balance of water and oxygen in the bonsai container. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to utilize the full strength of my hose to be able to blast off and wash away as many spider mites as possible. And I'm really going to be aggressive in the full your mass of the tree to try and accomplish this okay so I'm just gonna support the container so that it doesn't tip over and I'm gonna really hammer the foliage mass of the tree making sure to go nice and slow over the foliage and if I need to support because your tree is going to be experiencing a lot of physical weight from the water then you can support to make sure that you're not moving the tree around in the container as you're washing off these spider mites. Okay, I'm gonna come at it from some different angles. And I'm gonna make sure to hit all aspects and all parts of the tree, keeping it off of the container, but thoroughly soaking and saturating the tree so that I give this a really extensive wash. Now, if I do this for the next seven days, there is a very, very high likelihood that on a tree that I can use the water eradication method to solve the spider mite infestation, that in seven days when I do the paper tap test, I'm not gonna see any more spider mites. And I would be willing to bet that if we came back in an hour when this foliage is dry and we did the paper tap te test method, that we would see a far smaller amount of blood streaks when we ran our hand over that paper because we've just washed off a significant number of spider mites. Now, some of you guys might be asking, didn't you just wash those spider mites onto the ground? Yeah, I did. I did. Are you worried about them getting on another tree? No, I'm not. Because spider mites as a organism are very small and very immobile compared to, say, something that has wings or something that has a much bigger body and can cover more ground more rapidly. I moved this tree to a point in the garden where I don't have anything else around. I've treated this over the gravel so that the spider mite don't have anything to wash on to be feeding on and continuing to proliferate. And I have a very strong amount of confidence that this is going to be a technique that allows me to gain control on this tree. Now, if this foliage mass were immediately over the soil, if, there were, if this tree were a heavily wired tree and styled and that water would be completely ruining the design of the tree each time we washed it, I may choose to go with a chemical method of treatment as opposed to the water eradication method. But this is a very low impact, no chemical way that we can control this infestation or at least attempt to. And if we see it be effective, we never had to touch a chemical. If it isn't effective, we always have the chemical methodology to lean back on. Here we have a tree that two years ago suffered a massive spider mite infestation. We were able to gain control, we were able to eradicate the spider mites, and two years later it's growing with a tremendous amount of health and vigor and that glow that a healthy tree has. You guys now have the tools to be able to identify when you have a spider mite issue, how to use the paper tap test to make sure spider mites are in fact the impediment. And you also have the knowledge of how you can control that in a multitude of ways to be able to eradicate this pest and get your bonsai back to that ultimate degree of health. Good luck, happy IDing, and take control of those spider mites.